Hi, I'm Lee Veras with today's Photoshop Rant, bringing you tips and techniques for Photoshop teachers and students. Today's rant will be about one of my favorite Photoshop parlor tricks, the horizontal curve. So what do I mean by Photoshop parlor tricks? So uh, while stage magic requires real skill, the Photoshop parlor trick just implies expertise utilizing an overly complex technique to achieve a result that can be had with a much simpler approach. The result may be somewhat useful, but the trick is primarily meant to impress the audience. The more arcane the method, the more it will impress. This can include using advanced techniques like frequency separation for simple retouching fixes. So today's rant looks at the horizontal curve. As far as I know, this technique was invented about 12 years ago by Jacob Bruce, and there was considerable discussion about this on Dan Margulis's Applied Color Theory Forum. This eventually started being called the Jacob's Ladder Technique, but for the most part, it's fallen out of use. However, I recently saw that someone had posted a tutorial about it, so I thought I'd debunk this technique here for you. All right, so here we are in Photoshop, and I have a, a picture of myself here. Um, and um, the technique, the horizontal curve technique goes like this. So we, we make a horizontal curve. We're going to make a curves adjustment. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to set it so that the input here on the, on the low end is 0, output's 128. So we bring that shadow point or the black point up to mid-level. And we bring the white point up to mid, down to mid-level. So we have... Um, a flat horizontal curve, and you can see what it's done is it's created a completely gray, featureless image. Now the trick comes when we change the apply mode from normal to soft light, and you can see nothing, it looks like nothing's happened. Uh, the idea here being that um, if I use the little, air, uh, little finger tool here and I'll, I'll, I'll place a point from the forehead, and I'll put a lock, sort of a lock point down there because I want to open up the shadows here. So I pull up on the lower part of the curve, and, and you know, miraculously, it seems to be opening up the shadows. Okay, cute, right? We've got the curve applied in soft light mode. Uh, so the question is is this going to be any better or different than just applying a curve? So let's do a curve adjustment, a regular curve adjustment. And I'll do the same thing without changing the apply mode. I'll just lock that point on the forehead down. Uh, maybe, yeah, maybe I'll lock another point just so the upper part of this curve doesn't move. And I'll open up the shadows. And it uh, looks pretty similar. One thing that you might be concerned about is as you, if you do an RGB composite curve, you can sometimes increase the saturation. So. Normally, I would just change the apply mode here from normal to luminosity. And then that way, you're ensured that there's no, uh, there isn't going to be any saturation increase in the colors when we apply this curve. So here is that curve. And to compare these, I'm going to toggle back and forth. And uh, the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to use layer comps. Um, layer comps is a way of uh, building a, per, a kind of a, a comp a composed state of the image. So this is just going to be a luminosity. That's a luminosity curve. And uh, then I'm going to turn that curve off and turn the other cur curve on and make another layer comp. And that's going to be our horizontal curve. OK. So now I can kind of toggle between these two layer comps and show you the before and after luminosity curve, the horizontal curve. Uh, and frankly, I don't see a lot of difference. If anything, I prefer what's happening with the luminosity curve over the horizontal curve. But we could probably get the curves to look more alike just by increasing this here a bit. So I'm adding kind of a little bit more of an adjustment in that horizontal curve to try and create the same effect. And let's toggle back and forth. All right, so they're very, very similar. But there doesn't seem to be any special reason to go to the trouble of making uh, a horizontal curve. Let's take another look at another image here. 
So, so here's an image, and I've already made the two curves here, and I wanted to point out one disadvantage of the horizontal curve versus the luminosity curve. So here's the horizontal curve, and I'm going to apply a luminosity curve. Now this is a very colorful image, and the, the horizontal curve, you can kind of see the highlights don't, they don't have quite the snap that the luminosity curve has. And if we, if we look at what the horizontal curve looks like, it's pretty, you know, it's pretty radical. We've really stretched this, the points of this curve compared to the, let's look at the regular curve, seems pretty gentle in comparison. And yet it's creating a, a more contrasty effect. And um, we've actually got more, uh, more tones are being pushed around without increasing the color saturation. So what, what exactly is happening here? I mean, there is, a, there, is a, there is a difference between applying something in soft light or overlay mode as, as opposed to applying it linearly. Uh, let's look at this step wedge here I've got, and I'm going to place um, a bar of gray over this. Now, this is being applied in normal mode right now. I'm going to switch this to uh, soft light. So when you see in soft light mode, uh, it is lightening the underlying image. Uh, but it kind of, it can't lighten the black point or the white point, And it kind of ramps off as it approaches those extremes. Um, soft light looks like this. And here's overlay. Overlay is a little more contrasty. So here's soft light. Here's overlay. You can see that this gray bar is making the gray background of the step wedge even lighter. And it's also making the shadow values a little bit lighter. So we're going like this. Soft light seems to uh, favor opening up the shadows. Overlay uh, seems to favor uh, lightening the highlight a bit. OK, so what about making things darker? Let's switch to the darker one here. Uh, this is a darker gray, so when I switch it to soft light, it should darken. And sure enough, it's darkening, right? And here's the overlay version. It makes it even darker. So it, it seems to, you can kind of see the, the overlay doesn't really affect the highlights as much in the darkening mode as uh, it does make the shadows darker. So there's a difference between soft light and overlay, but both of those ramp off of the extreme values in a way that is different uh, than if we applied it linearly. So here's the linear light. This would be like applying the curve linearly. And you can kind of see when I darken the values, I can clip the low values. And if we switch now to the lighter one and we do linear, which would kind of be a little bit more like the linear curve. Um, so here's the linear light. You can kind of see it's lightened everything by the same amount linearly across the, the scale. So we get a much more intense effect at the extremes, so the highlights and the shadows. Um, this is what's giving us the look back in this image, where the highlights have a bit more snap, uh, and even though the curve is much more gentle than the horizontal curve. OK. Well, that's it for today. I'll look at more parlor tricks from time to time. Remember to subscribe to The Rant and ring the bell so you'll be informed uh, when the next rant is posted. Photoshop Rant brings you weekly Photoshop tips and techniques for teachers and students with a focus on old school techniques and step-by-step -step tutorials. If you'd like to see how I might approach an image enhancement, Put your image into a Dropbox or Google Drive and send a link with an explanation of what you'd like to achieve. Send that to me at varus at varus.com. Thanks. I'll see you in the next rant.